Right, this is our job. <coughs> yeah, spent the last two and a half days raking all this out. You can see the far end, just there. That's an extension there. So that's new brick and proper jointing, so we've just stopped at the two of them, taking everything else out. Anyway, they've got damp problems inside, and you can see the colour there. See the green? The water comes down. Pretty sure it comes down this dry verge to this point here, to where it's cut and drips off the end there, down the fascia board, across the soffit, hits the wires, straight down the wall. So they're going to get going to get that repaired, but eventually they're getting all this replaced because it is getting on a bit. And we've got um, just the, up to DPC there, and a little bit around the front as well, a little bit of patching, a few cracks. And then there's a patch around the back where the new extension meets the old brickwork and then there's a conservatory so there's like a, a section of about 150 bricks I did that yesterday, that's the last bit. <clears throat> so today's the nice, easy, relaxing bit, no more mess. So it's a customer's tower as well, that's handy. So it shouldn't take long to get up the, the top of the pipe and we can start dropping the scaffold down as we go then. Yeah, so um, I'll just do a quick one of uh, the gauge I use and how I get the gauge right. So I'll just find somewhere to put the camera and get ca get carried. Right, Feb's already in. It's the second Feb we use. Max mix. And uh, with it only being a small mix, we put a little tiny amount in. We probably don't even put 10 in. Only probably 5, if that. Don't really need a lot of tiny bit of water because you can't make it wet. If it's wet, you can't use it. It's got to be very, very dry. So you, you start off dry and add water to it, so it, it wets up very, very slowly. And you've got to mix enough to mix in the mixer. So bucket trowel, little bucket. Doesn't matter what you use as long as you use the same thing to measure everything. And we do four to one, so it's four of those one cement times by however many so that's 16 let's get some cement in Quick one. This this Hansen cement, I've not seen in the brown bags before. And it, the bag is pretty poor quality, I'm guessing. But with the cement shortage at the moment, this is in these bags are uh, imported. Because the Hansen bags are usually a different colour and what a better quality. So I mean it might be wrong, but that's just my guess. It's, this is imported cement. So we've got 16 sand, 7 cement, so obviously that's too much cement. So 7 cement to 4 sand is 28 to 1, 28 to 7, so we need to get another 12 sand in there. I always put sand in first, then the cement, then add the sand. The sand stops the cement sticking to the back at the beginning of the mix. As you can see that is way too dry, but we'll just leave it, give it a few minutes. And when the feather starts to activate then and it will start to wet up. But normally you filter your motion that there's no point yet. You can't take water out. So here's the rest of the fuel we're using. 
trusty point and trowel. That is just a cheap point and trowel that. I just ground it round the top. Brand new Marshall Town jointer. Brush for cleaning. Tuck point just in case you need that. Little hand board, handmade. Had that for years. And um, we've got the the pick in case we've missed any bits out. So they're going up. And we're gonna need a load of clips to clip all these wires back as well. See that's starting to come up, come through now. We'll need water, but just not yet.
Right, two, two shortish days in, we're on the ground. Can reach now, scaffold's getting put away, which is good. So we can speed up a bit tomorrow, get here a bit earlier, get a full day on it. It's only just after four o'clock now, so we're going to be about half seven tomorrow. Work right through to at least half four, five o'clock. Try and get about eight metres in. Plus the, um, the beds are a lot bigger down the bottom here. They were really tight at the top, which is really hard. Trying to get your motoring to a tight bed and a tight cross joint. So, um, yeah. Let's get back and go and see Alex for his birthday. Right, another must do when you're pointing. This is already done. Once you've ground out, you've got to get all the dust out. You've got to get these juts. You've got to get these bricks spotless. As you can see, once you've ground out, you get right back to the iris of the brick. Nice clean iris, so your, your new mortar's got something to stick to. And especially in weather like this, you've got to keep the wall damp so that your mortar doesn't go off too quick. Now these bricks are quite dense, so once they get too wet, they stay wet, which you don't want. You do want them to dry out a bit. It's mainly the mortar behind that you want to stay damp. So it's not sucking all the water out of your, your mix. So, on the older properties it tends to suck the water straight out, but these are the newer brick. Yeah, what I've already done, I've already cleaned all the crap out. That was done straight away. So all I'm doing now is just damping it down ready. As you can see, they're not drying very quick. Look at there. You watch that mortar. Actually, see it drying. The bricks aren't. The bricks are keeping the water. But anyway, that's it. Make sure you keep the brick damp. That's today's progress. Good day today. It's always easier on the ground. From the two than here. 24 courses up, all the way across the window, under the window, and we're on this section now. Uh, it's getting on for four o'clock, I think, but I'm gonna push on a bit. So, here's the mortar I've mixed. Let's get my bucket trowel. See how stiff that is. Oh. Even that's probably on the wet side. It's very, uh, very doughy sand. This be crap for me for brick lane, but great for pointing. A manageable amount. So your beds are roughly 10 mil. So you push your mortar down to roughly 10 mil, as you can see. And then you're probably 10 15 mil deep, so 10 15 mil back. So there you go, that's on your trial. Lucky that stayed on. And then into the joint, push. Don't push it too hard though or it'll spread out onto the brick. Cross joints, this is a big one so put plenty on there.
thinner the thinner the joints, the harder it is not to make a mess. Just do a bit down here, a bit close up. You're aiming to get that joint full because you don't want to void around it. The water's going to get in and frost. So you're aiming to get that joint full. And cross joint, same again. I push it on just so it's touching. And then I push it in. Make sure it's full. And I'm working the right way. Always work left to right. So as you as you put your mortar in, you're pushing against what you've already put in, like that. too wet. The wetter it is the more chance of it getting on the brick. It's just harder to handle. So I'm gonna get this next section in and then get back to you when I'm jointing it up. half a metre that so just lash it in trying to keep it off the bricks which isn't easy with these uh, rustic brick but that'll soon weather off now the fat end of your jointer this is a Marshall Town 81 I can't read the measurements um, I think it's three quarters of an inch it's the biggest they do so as you're doing it put the heel in like that so as you're drawing it across with the heel, you're compressing the mortar into the joint. So you've got to do it while it's still soft, but not too soft. So you send that across. Now flick it back, put the, the toe in, and pull it back. So that's all compacted. Same again. Heel, toe, heel, toe. Using the toe of the trowel to get the pressure on it. So you go like that. And when you're finishing off, you put it as flat as you can. Get a nice finish on it. So, just dragging them all in. We're just compacting them first. Always beds first as well. So there's our new stuff. So using the heel again to compact them in. Toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. You get the gist of it. I do is just flip it thinner end go over it with the thinner end and that compacts it again mm. 
So, now I just get the side of the joint and just scrape the excess off. Now, I used to brush this, but the brush ruins it. Sponge, as you see by the edge of it, I'm just using it side on. Gentle as you like, just take, just doing it like that, let the sponge take 45 degrees, get your beds and your cross joints. It. Now what I do then is horizontally and what that does is because the feather of the brick it just blends the mortar into the into the feather of the brick, seals it all up, cuts off any excess. Stuff like this can't be helped because a lot of chip brick. So we just let it go. That's it. Beginner's guide how to repoint a wall. So if this video is any good to you and it's helped you out, make sure you subscribe for more more videos. Um, give us a like. Hopefully you liked it. And um, hit that notification button so you find out when we're posting videos, which is pretty much every week. So, Tuesday, about quarter past four, we've done um, that end, up to DPC, we're originally going to rebuild back the side, we've done just under the window at the front, this bit was done Thursday when we were last, and this is today, so uh, probably, let me think, from there, down, and across, To the to that area, so I'm just finishing off now, and <clears throat> I've still got to put the cables back, clip them all back up, put the downspouts on around the back, put that downspout on, and bag up about two thirds of a ton of sand into the van to get rid of it because we're done today. Don't want to be coming back just to get the sand because we need the sand for tomorrow's job. That's it. Just film this last bit going in.
Magic sponge. Done for. Right, let's get tidied up. Finished off. <laughs>